I think for me it was just living my dream. And I think that's what a lot of people do not do in this part of the world. Just, just live your dream. So if your dream is to own a spa, find a way to make it happen. Okay. And so long as you're willing to put in all the effort required, you'll be fine. viewers, you are watching another episode of Young Entrepreneurs Speak, the show about young Ghanaian entrepreneurs and the stories behind their successful business ventures. My name is Nefa and on today's episode you will meet a young gentleman who was inspired by the many open markets he saw whilst abroad and is today known for establishing one of the most anticipated open air markets in Ghana. Let's go and meet the brain behind the Accra Goods Market. Come along! Hello, Makafui. Hi. How are you well, doing? Fine, thank you. How are you doing? No, it's not bad. Not yes. Bad. Welcome yeah. to Young Entrepreneurs Speak. Thank you. It's, it's a pleasure. Yes. Okay, yeah. so Makafui, what's your last name? How is it pronounced, in fact? Uh, it depends. Um, <laughs> well, there are two. So there's, okay. there's, there's the, the foreign version, which is Amy. Okay. And then there's a local interpretation of it, which is Ayume. Okay, so w yeah. for the purpose of this show, we oh, should go with... Amy is fine. Amy is fine. Yes. Okay, so Makafui... <laughs> Bukafi Amy. So once again, thank you for coming on Young Entrepreneurs. Glad Speak. to be here. Yeah. So just a bit of background. Um, you went to Presec, correct? I did, yes. yes. The, the did, best school, yes. Yes. <laughs> the best school, huh? Yes. And then did uni in Ashesi? Um, no, so no? actually, okay. um, I went to, to uni in London. Oh, okay. uh, I went All to right. the University of Greenwich. Okay. But I worked in Ashesi. Oh, you worked in Ashesi. Yes. So what did you study in uni? Um, human resource management. Human resource management. Yes. Okay, so... Straight out of uni. I know, like everyone. <laughs> so my, my first job was in finance. Um, okay. I worked for the Essex County Council okay. in the UK. Um, then I moved back to Ghana, worked for Shesi. Then I moved to Cape Town, okay. worked for Meltwater. Okay. Um, then I quit, <laughs> went to do a postgrad. Right. Um, in what exactly? In digital marketing. Digital marketing. Um, okay. And now we're back. We're back in Accra and enjoying, enjoying being back home. So I'm trying to connect the dots, you yes. know. First finance. Yes. Well, human resources as yes. your main study. Yes. So um, that's never been used. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing or not. Well. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. How did you come up with this idea? So straight out of um, uni, you had yes. various jobs. Yes. Did you come up with Accra Goods straight out of that or? Because I went to school in, 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 in a part of London called Katisak. Okay. Um, that's where the Greenwich Meridian, Meridian passes through. Right. So the university on its own is a tourist attraction. Okay. Um, and they had all these little markets in Katisa. Okay. So you could just pop in, grab a meal, buy artisan design goods. And it was just amazing. Like right. you spend your time just sitting there having a drink, chit chatting. Was that like your first time experiencing something like that? It was. Okay. Um, and I thought this is very different from what we're used to. Right. So growing up, I knew that there was a trade fair. So yes. the trade fair was basically just a lot of vendors mm -hmm. selling all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. Um, but then this had a vibe to it. It was more of a lifestyle. Okay. You know, so everybody wakes up on Saturday morning and they know they've got to go to maybe the Dalston market or to okay. go to a market in Shoreditch okay. or to go to Lewisham for, for street, street fees, you know, dinarama. And I just thought it's different. And I thought, what if we created something that allowed people to express themselves? Okay. So express their sense of fashion, express their sense of creativity, you know, anything that allows you to just be yourself. Be yourself and, and out of the ordinary. So is, how you did know. you birth this idea? Like how did you come up with it? So moving on from London, okay. went to Cape Town. And Cape Town has a market it's called the Naval Goods Market. Okay. It's it's the best market I've ever been to. Okay. Lots of food, because I love food. <laughs> yeah, food is it's the death of me. Okay, so you visited various markets, um, yes. you enjoyed it, especially the yes. ones that had loads of food. Yeah, exactly. So was that like your light bulb moment where you yes. said, I'd like to do this, exactly. but back at home? So when I got back, mm -hmm. I, I came back in 2012, okay. didn't run the market, okay. 2013, 2014. Then 2015, I was like, you know what, let's just do this. Okay. It's not going to take much. <laughs> but over the years, you still had like, the idea. So I was just thinking mind, about right? it, it was just lingering. Mm -hmm. um, I think I didn't just have the guts to do it. Okay, why is that? 
I, how would people react? Sure. You know, it's, it's the first of its kind. Right. Would I get the same kind of enthusiasm I want? Okay. And, and I, I think that timing is always perfect. Okay. You know, timing needs to be perfect, more or less. So, 2015, mm -hmm. Sith March, I thought it's a public holiday. Mm -hmm. People would definitely want something to do. I'm losing my win when two play that game and only one win. Then it must be a sin. No woman to cry, I'll be willing to try. Your mind they are now or now. Nah. Lose myself so I can find you. What defines you? I won't live with you or sign you. Exchange no be what, but we must stop. Remind you, TikTok. See the way this my time. Time to go, time to come. Drop money, we never drop for night. Time to go, just never mind the grow. Time to grow. Yes, I know just to come make a go. So tell yeah. us about the first event on Sith March of 2015. Yes. We did 23 vendors. Okay. We literally had to, to chase people. So like we were phoning all our friends. Mm -hmm. We're like, um, we've got a market coming up. Come and set up a stall. Okay. A few people were, well, actually, no, a lot of people were like, no, we're not interested. Okay. You've never done this before. That was their main reason? Yes. They've never done it before. You've never done this okay. before. We're not sure if you can pull a crowd. You know, but we, we got 20 vendors who, who stuck with us. So how did you finally get to convince those 20 vendors to be a part of this? We literally just said, look, it's, it's going to be good. This is what <laughs> we plan to do. You know, we're, we're going to have food, we're going to have drinks. Okay. And we picked, we, we picked brands that were um, quote unquote hot at the time. Okay, so, so there was, um, there was Ni, Ni's Gourmet Factory. So okay. he had just started like a, um, a bespoke um, kitchen. Okay. So he, he tailor makes food. Okay. There was um, there was a, a, a natural um, products vendor. She was doing coconut oil. Okay. Um, can't remember her brand name now, but she went to a chassis. Right. Um, she just come out of uni. She was looking to establish a brand. Sure. So she came through. Um, we also had people who just wanted to try their hands at something new. Okay. You know, we had a few people selling fabrics. There was a Kitesia, the fashion brand. Right. Um, and so that literally just set the tone for us. And I think once people saw that these brands were going to be there, they realized that it, would, wouldn't, it wouldn't be a, a bad opportunity to take advantage of. But how do you of. get people to know that these brands would be there? So social, how do you social advertise? Media. Social media. So that's the only way we, we advertise. Okay. Um, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Okay. We don't do radio, TV, because our target audience is the millennial, generation right. X and Y. Our brand is very aspirational. So even for people who've never lived abroad, who've, who've never experienced these kinds of markets, they easily adapt because they attend the very first events and they notice how people dress. And, and that, that became a very interesting feature of our markets. Okay. And you notice that suddenly everyone was dressing in a certain way. They were, well, the certain way what? They, they were chic, they were cool, they were trendy. Okay. You know, and, and people were, you had a few people dressed like hipsters, mm. and I love that vibe, you know, that creative ambience. But that's exactly that what you're created. looking for, right? Exactly, okay. exactly. So that was amazing. We, do, we haven't had to work on that. Okay. You know, I mean, look at how you are dressed, <laughs> for example. And that, and that just fits in nicely with... I see. You know, they keep talking the kind of, about the brand, so what brand yes. are you referring to? So the brand, the Crack Goods Market, okay. um, we're essentially, we start off as a pop-up market. Okay. Um, we've evolved to become a business support network. In what way? Like okay. What does so, that entail? So we've got partnerships that allow us to support the businesses within the network. Okay. So for hmm. example, we've got a partnership with Albrim Microfinance. Okay. They provide small loans for our vendors. Oh, okay. That's nice. So if nice. you need, yes, if you need a small loan from anything between 500 and 2,000 CDs, okay. there are a few conditions that you need to meet, meet, but that works. How did you get about getting other companies to come on board? Board, you know and partner with you for certain for certain aspects okay so the the the, the microfinance um I, I already have a relationship with the with the owners okay. i went to i went to Presec with them okay. um i just show them a plan in terms of what we're looking to achieve and how we think their relationship could benefit our vendors and they were happy to come along right. um, i mean we've worked with brands like uber we still work okay. with uber right. uber provides us with uh, promo codes 
so that our vendors and shoppers can ride either on a discounted um, voucher okay. or they get their first ride for free. I see. Yeah. So with Uber saying you just walked up to them as well? So, so Uber phoned us. Oh, is it? Yes, <laughs> Uber phoned us. And that's, that's how cool we've become. Like if Uber phones you, you should know that you're becoming a right, you right, know, right. cool brand. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm sure people are wondering, okay, you talked about how you have vendors coming on board. You'll probably be wondering how profitable this is. So yes. I'll ask you that, but hold on to it. You're watching Young Entrepreneurs Speak. We're going on a quick commercial break. And when we come back, McCarthy, who is the creative director for the Accra Goods Market, will tell us how profitable this venture has been for him. Stick with us. So welcome back from the break. Before we went on our short break, we're talking to Makafui Amy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got that. <laughs> <laughs> Who is the creative director for the Accra Goose Market? Yes. Um, it's a pop-up store yes. that brings together fashion brands, yes. food brands, etc., yes. under yes. one um, open market, yes. and then to advertise their products and services. So Makafui, how? profitable is this because you mentioned how you charge a fee that allows loads of people to come on board as vendors right yes. and um, but you hire venues like I said you have DJs yes. um, you rent my keys like yes. we're sitting on the one right now so how profitable yes. is this I mean job? it it says to the extent that we've been running this for two years okay so in in, in, in essence you see how we're able to, to get the numbers to tally. Right. So the most important thing is that we create a budget for each event. Mm. So we don't exceed the budget. Okay. So we know that we're working with this set amount and okay. that's what we've got towards the market. Now, based on the number of vendors that we will put together for that budget set period, mm -hmm. we will know how much we would need. Okay. And so it is, it is a profitable venture. I mean, nobody goes into business. I know, hoping to make a loss. Yes, <laughs> well, if you're an NGO, then perhaps, you know, you're looking at a charity No losses event. there, just charitable. Yes, you know, okay, but we're, right. we're, 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 we're a decent um, organization. I mean, right. we, we've got a staff strength or... We've I was got about three, to ask if you do this alone. Yeah, so we've got three directors okay. um, and we've got two, two, two full-time members of staff. So all this um, was your idea, right? Yes, so how did you yes. get your directors and your staff to come on board? So um, again, just went to them, pitched the idea of what we're doing. They had already seen some of the work we had done. And they were like, we'll, we'll be more than happy to you know, come on board and see how we can you know, put our brains together to get this going. So as even I'm a vendor, yes. I've paid you for a stand and I come and set up and I don't make even one sale. It's not going to happen, it's impossible. <laughs> It's impossible. Okay, well, maybe I do make a sale, but I yes. don't make as much sales as I thought okay, I would. Okay, so we, we like to pitch the idea of a sale. Okay. And we tell all the vendors, people are coming because you're going to sell discounted items. Sure. Okay. So, for example, they know that in the shop, it costs 120 But then you're selling it for 80 cents at the market. So yeah, they wouldn't want to miss that opportunity. Right. And, and so we have vendors who, who do really, really well, and, and vendors who not so well because they're probably overpriced or it's their first time okay. or they're not as interactive as they should be. We even have vendors who don't, the owners don't show up hmm. and they send a shop person. I and that's totally different yeah. because the interaction and the level of bargaining from the, owner, the perspective right. of a salesperson is not right. the same as as that of our owner. I see. You know, so we always encourage the owners to be here. What have been some of the, should I call them risks or challenges that you faced in coming up with this? Because it looks all rosy. Yes. You see your pictures on Instagram, people are smiling, yeah, well, people that's, are that's, happy. That's, that's, that's what we want you to see. <laughs> we don't see um, the dirty side. Yeah, so you, you saw know. me going around, like getting tables, yes. chairs, <laughs> you know, having to negotiate with vendors. Yes. You know. it's, 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 it comes, there. I mean, it comes with the territory. Right. And, and I think you just need to find a way to manage all of that. Right. You know, um, I mean, the difficulty obviously nature okay you know you yeah. touch wood rain yeah you know so it's open air yeah, exactly space. so those are some of the things that you know um, we 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 causes that those things causes anxiety right but eventually right. everything pans out well but vendor payments because you charge for your service yes, have you yes. had instances where vendors did not pay you also we have, a, we have we have a system okay uh, we have a, we have a, a proper system and a cutoff time for payments. Okay. So we have a form that you fill to register as a vendor. Payments must be made by a certain time. Okay. Um, so I mean, there's no pressure on us. You know, vendors coming and they haven't paid. No, we, we we try to avoid all of that. Has it always been that way, or yes. you learned over the years? It's been, oh, it's been standard right practice. Yes. Okay, right standard from the get go. Yes. Okay, so. I see. So when you do this, what do you look out for? I see you interacting with the vendors. You know, you're having good conversations. They're laughing. You're yes. putting them at ease. Yes. What is in it for you? What are you looking for? So I need to make them comfortable. Right. And when they're comfortable, they'll be able to give me a true reflection of the experience. Mm -hmm. 
So if something didn't go well, they'll be able to tell me in a manner that's not too stern. You see, so they'll be more than happy to say, oh, you know what, I think the next time you should do this or do that. You know, so if you don't have a relationship with them, they'll probably just keep it to themselves and knowing the Ghanaian culture, we don't complain. So they'll just not show up for the next one. And then you've just been wondering, like, what's going on? You know, so I try to keep an open um, level of communication. So they can tell me, I mean, some tell me off. <laughs> um, like no, I don't like where you've placed me, right. and I'm like no, you're gonna stay there today, you know. And then we have banter, and in the end, I mean, it's 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 all fun and yeah. it's all fun and games. Um, but we try as much as possible to take all the feedback we get so that we improve it. How often do you do this? So we we run a, a market every public holiday. Okay. So essentially, um, we start off the year with Sith March. Okay. Um, move into May 25th. Right. Then we go to July, July. one. Then we do September 21st, mm. then December sec December okay. 1st or 2nd uh, for Farmers Day. So that's like five, five yes. markets. And then we have night markets in between. Wow. Yeah, busy so, all year. Yes, we have to. <laughs> you know, so, so the night markets are smaller. Okay. We would only have about 15 to 20 vendors. And that's to help the vendors sell more. Okay. So it's a smaller market. Um, smaller in terms of a in terms of a number of vendors, vendors right. but then the patronage is equally good. The same. Yes. Okay. So how do you come up with these ideas that I want to do a night market at this location instead, or let's use this venue versus so it's, again, another venue? So like I said, we've we've got a team. Okay. So we, we just sit and brainstorm, brainstorm and we're like, ah, we found a cool spot somewhere. Let's let's have a market. There. <laughs> you know, um, and then someone will say, no, I don't like that venue. You know, but in a, in a nutshell, we we try to evolve as much as possible. Yeah. Um, in the past, we've had a live band perform. Mm, interesting. Um, Calabash, they performed at about six of our markets. Oh, it was our very first market. All right. And, and that was one of the turning moments. Because no one had done an open up market with a live band. band. Yeah, it sounds really You know, different. so, I mean, that really set us on that journey okay. to, to becoming what we've become now. Do you have um, a regular 9 to 5? Well, I do. <laughs> okay. So, so in, in the sense that I, I, I run a, a boutique digital agency. Okay. Um, so I've got clients I do work for. Okay. So that's my 9 to 5. Oh, it's just okay. that my 9 to 5 happens to be within... It my other nine to five. So, right. so I do two nine to fives in my nine to five. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what was it like when you finally decided that? What was your last job? Um, I used to work in marketing. I was head of marketing for Blue Telecom. Okay, so um, when did you just decide that I'm not going to do this anymore? Um, I want to do my own thing. So I get bored really easily, hmm. like really quickly, <laughs> I, and I lose concentration. Okay. So I, I just got bored, and I was like, I want something different. Okay. You know. And this is um, for how many years at Blue? Oh wow, you really do get work quickly. I know, I, my, I, have, I have terrible manners when it comes to work. I see. Um, I think the longest job I've kept was for two years in Cape Town. Okay. And only because I was in Cape Town and I couldn't move to Ghana. So, so I had to stick with the job. Right. Yeah. Oh, I see. So what was it like when you finally said, I'm going to quit Blue and then go and do my own thing? It was, it was the easiest thing to do. We'd, I mean, we'd, I, I quit Blue the following year. Mm. Um, so we'd already done three... Um, markets so we're done March July and December okay and I just realized that we needed a working. lot of a lot of work to get it to the standards that we wanted there was no fear because yeah. you know when people want to venture out of their nine to five which ensures they have a regular monthly income which they can actually use to support their personal work there's always that sense of okay so if I quit my money is not going to come on a monthly basis how do I sustain myself did you have to go through those motions I, I think for me it was just living my dream and, and I think that's what a lot of people do not do in this part of the world. Just just live your dream. So if your dream is to own a spa, find a way to make it happen. Okay. And so long as you're willing to put in all the effort required, you'll be fine. And I think that's what I would like to, to tell everyone. Um, and so we're looking to start a mentorship program so that people who want um, to probably go into fashion, into design goods, we've got a network that can provide them with an avenue to sell, We've got a partnership with a microfinance that will give them access to cash. You know, we want to do a bit of training. Right. So that it's actually bigger than just setting exactly. up and then having vendors. Exactly. Sell. And that's why we're evolving into the into the business network, like I was saying. 
So we're providing a, an end-to-end -end solution. So we will train you, provide you with an avenue to sell, we'll give you access to finance, and we're opening a store in Joburg as well. Oh, I see. So we're, we're going nice. to Johannesburg towards the end of a month. Um, vendors will be able to stock their items in our, in our Johannesburg store. Okay, that's nice. Have so you already started this? We're kicking it off this year. Okay. Um, as, as part of our first quarter goals, we're ensuring that we would have at least one training session. Why do you need to do the... this? Is it because when you were starting, was well, you made, you said it was pretty easy for you yes. to start, probably because you well, had that really, background. But... It was... <laughs> Okay, well, fairly easy fairly, yes. for you to start. So yes. why the need to do this? I, I think that a lot of people venture into businesses without knowing full well what they're getting themselves into. Right. And I think that's why a lot of businesses fail two to three years down the line. Right. Because there's no plan. Right. You know, and we want to draw their attention to the fact that you need to have a business plan. Right. You need to know that in the next two to three years, these are my objectives. Right. How do I get there? And we always need to have a, a system for measuring. Right. You know, you, have, you need to set benchmarks and identify whether you've achieved what you that. Out to. And so we want the vendors to go through that process so that this becomes their full time job, not a, a side gig. <laughs> you know. So it's essentially, that's, 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 that's what we're looking to, to achieve okay. with the training. Okay, all right, sure. When we come back, um, Makafu would give some advice to you hopeful entrepreneurs who want to start you know, your own um, gigs and move it from being a side job into a permanent you know, venture that you've gone into. We'll be right back. If you just tuned in, this is Young Entrepreneurs Speak, the show about successful entrepreneurs in Ghana and beyond, and the stories behind how they build these successful business ventures that they are in. Our guest today is Makafui, and if you've heard of Accra Goods Market, then his name is synonymous with it because he's the creative director for the most anticipated open air market in Ghana. So, Maka, uh, Accra Goods Market is about bringing vendors together and then buying and selling, right? Yes. So, what's the process if I want to, you know, be one of the vendors at Accra Goods Market? So so because we're heavy, we heavily rely on social media, okay. we'd always put up a post okay. on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Um, once you show interest, we send you a, a T's and C's okay. that you fill. Um, there are different categories, so you'd fill in what category you want to sell within, sure. um, how many stores you need. And then there are a few indemnity issues that we need you to sign off as well. Okay. <laughs> what happens if I breach? In fact, first of all, take us through some of the few indemnity issues. So for example, um, we're not liable for theft, loss of goods, unable to sell, sure. um, natural, yeah. you know, uh, rain. Acts of God. Acts of, yeah, <laughs> we, we, we cannot be held responsible for that. Okay. Um, and then so what yes. happens if, for instance, you have a vendor that says, I'm coming to sell shoes, and then they end up coming with bags and clothes and so we, accessories. So in, in, the, in the form, we actually state that it's at our discretion to allow you to okay. participate in the next event. Oh, okay. So, right. I mean, we, we can speak to you if you're willing to abide. But if not, I mean, we, we want, we, we want to, to make it easy for others to sell as well. And so we don't want the same type of products. Right. And that's the whole purpose of filling the form. Right. So that we can better manage and balance the, the activities that take place. Okay. Yes. Have you had that one market where you, everything just was like not going according to plan? Set up. Set up is always my headache. <laughs> okay. So so yesterday I was here until 2 a.m. Okay. to ensure that this was done before today. Okay. Um, on the days where setup has been done on the day, it's, it's a it's nightmare. It's, it's panic. Okay, but um, no issues from vendors, nothing like no, that? No, no, no. The, the vendors are normally, I mean, initially you'd have a bit of a reaction, but afterwards they understand and, and then we just move on. And then we just right. move on. Not bad, I see. So the purpose for shows like this is to um, inspire, you know, young people. Yes. You talk about how I think the mission or the vision that you have for Accra Goods is to actually yes. spur fellow entrepreneurs on yes. to start their own thing. So what can you say to someone who's watching right now and wants to get into their own business? I think don't don't be afraid to start, and don't be afraid to fail. So when you you you're not afraid to start, you would begin whatever dream you want right. to 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 pursue right. and then when you're not afraid to fail 
you would view the failures as learning yeah, curves. Have you failed before? Yes, How several times. times. Really? Several times. And, what do you and do? the key is, is just getting, <laughs> getting back up. You know, we've, we, we had an event here, it was a night market. We thought the venue had enough lighting, okay. but it didn't. So we brought string lights yeah. that were supposed to just create an ambience. Right. But then it was really, really dark. dark. So and what it was you do terrible. in that case? There was nothing we could do. <laughs> so we made sure that the next one, we went to a smaller venue and we had more lights. Right. And everyone was like, this is too bright. So we're like, well. You're like, we've learned you know? from the, you know, <laughs> yes. from the past. So it's, that we it's had. don't be afraid to fail. Um, just start all over again. And I think people, that, people will appreciate your resilience. Right. Because that also says something about you. Right. It says that you're someone who doesn't give up. And that's the quality you need to succeed as an entrepreneur. Definitely. So don't be afraid to start and don't be afraid to fail. Good advice, good advice. Where do you see the brand Aqua Goods stay in the nearest future? Oh, Joburg, Lagos, <laughs> London. They're taking over Africa. Wait, no, no, no. We're, we're going international. Like we're, we're, we're actually looking for partnerships all around the world okay. so that our vendors can stock. Okay. So anywhere, you know, Europe, America, the rest of Africa. Sure. So we're starting with Johannesburg. It's, it's a lovely city for fashion right. and we're, we're, we're really keen to, to establish our footprint okay. in, in that city. And of course, we see you as the head and you've worked there before, it should probably make it relatively easier <laughs> well, know, to get into the market. Hmm. Well, we'll see. It's too big. <laughs> <laughs> sure, okay. So how can people um, reach you? How can you be contacted? Um, Facebook, Instagram, we have a website. Okay. Oh, I forgot to ever mention that. So we've got an e-commerce store okay. that allows you to stock online oh, okay. when we when we don't have the offline events okay. so look us up the Accra Goods Market across all the channels, channels. Okay. Yes. All right. thank you so much Makafi thanks for, for having me it's today. been amazing it's <laughs> I have to leave to you. you so you know you go and interact yes. with your vendors and get some food that. yes and they're giving you like evil eyes and all that yes. so we'll let you go sure so let's go and then I can show you around sure, as well sure we'll have an interaction with some other vendors Brilliant. as well Okay, my name is Radia. Um, yeah. The company is Belessa Box. So basically, we sell beauty products and skincare products. And we are into makeup training and everything beauty. And Belessa Box means beauty box in Spanish. Oh, okay. All yeah. Right, nice. So, why did you decide to join the Accra Goods market? I mean, I've been on Accra Goods now for almost two years or even more. Oh, wow. Because of the crowd, I like the crowd here and I try to always come out for people to know me better about my brand. For you to do it for two years, it means it's been working for you? Yes, it has been working for me. I mean, the crowd is always like, yes. <laughs> and sales is always good? Sales is always good. I always try to do sales. I mean, you have to do something to bring them in. My name is Gloria Nyabu. And then the company is Enam African Collections. We deal with beads and then menswear okay. and then slippers and bags from Kenya. So that's what we do. So um, how long have you been part of a bag? Uh, we started with them last year, July. So I think we've done about seven events, events with them. Has it worked for you? Perfect. Yes? Perfect. <laughs> how, how, how perfect? <laughs> We mix those any time we can, and it's their publicity is big. So when it's at Bagus Markets, everybody is ready to come. Hi, my name is Mimi, and uh, well, I'm the CEO of the Smoking Party, and we do grills for every occasion. So if you anything that can be grilled, Smoking Party has got you covered. Well, this is our second market, and as always, it's been fantastic. The crowd is marvelous. You know, the vendors are really friendly. The customers are. Exceptionally exceptional, so if, I, if I can say so, it's been good. It's been good, yeah. Viewers, this brings us to the end of another episode of Young Entrepreneurs Speak. Our guest today was Makafui Amy, the brain behind the Accra Goods Market, and he had two important words of advice. He says, do not be afraid to start and do not be afraid to fail. I hope you've taken that advice and you're going to get up and start your own entrepreneurship venture. I'll catch you on the next episode of Young Entrepreneurs Speak. See you next time. Bye.